Let's move on to question 4.2. The pie charts on Annex to B compare the first best-selling vehicles in South Africa, America, and Canada for 2021. Okay, like usual, go find your Annex shirt, make sure you have it. Your one will be in colour in your exam. I printed mine out in black and white, which made it quite difficult for me. You'll see as we go through the question. But let's make sure you have that and let's continue with the questions. Use Annex to B to answer the questions that follow. 4.2.1. Write down in words the total number of vehicles sold in America. Okay, so let's go here. Right, let's look. There is South Africa. There's America. There's Canada. We're looking at America. If you look, here are sort of the splits of the cars, but the totals are given here at the bottom. Okay, if you wanted to, you could go add all these up and it will give you the total, but no need because it's actually given to you. Okay, so we have to write that amount out in words, right? It did say, let's just double check again, number of vehicles in America. So we're going to say 2,584,176, okay? So that's what we need to say. We need to write it out. So let's make sure that we're doing this correctly. So it is 2 million, right? 584 thousand okay because that's our thousand units and a hundred and seventy six okay so here they are basically looking where you get your marks is they're looking at your unit places so million thousands and then just your units okay that's how they're expecting you to write it out so we're done there we got two marks let's move on to the next question express as a ratio in the form this to this to this, the number of Toyota RAV4s, right? I don't know if I said that right, sold in America, Canada, and South Africa, respectively. Now, importantly, it's going to go America, Canada, South Africa. Now, if you look at the actual annexure, it goes South Africa, America, Canada. So don't mix them up. That's what students were doing. You have to do in the right order, okay? I don't know why I've got a weird British accent going on here, but let's just continue with this video, right? So it's America to Canada to South Africa, okay? So America, we know has, um, we're looking at, sorry, RAV4, right? I went and colored mine in in pink just because you can see that these two slices here both came out as white when I printed out black and white. Don't stress about that being the case for you when you get your papers at the end of the year because it will be in color. But I just highlighted. So it's going to be, uh, it says America. So it's going to be 407739 to Canada, right? Canada is this one, 61934, right? To... 36085. Now you could be saying, oh Margie, that's all very easy because you've highlighted it, right? How would you know that these would be the same? Well, you go look here and you'd say, okay, what are my RAV4, right? What color is that? And look for that color on the pie chart and do that for each, right? So be careful that you're doing that. They didn't ask us to simplify the ratio. Students sometimes want to divide these in order to make one of them one. It didn't say a simplified ratio or a unit ratio. So don't stress about that, okay? So let's continue and... Let's now look at the next question. Okay, 4.2.3, write down the median, right? When we see the word median, we're always thinking, okay, in the middle, we're not, not stressed about that. Number of best-selling vehicles in South Africa. Okay, so we're over here. These are the best-selling in each of the countries. We've looked at that, right? So now we're just looking at South Africa over here. When we're looking at the median, we remember that we have to order our numbers, right? So we have to go from smallest to biggest, and the median is the middle number. Okay, so we need to order them first. So let's start by ordering them, 4.2.3. So what is our smallest? Our smallest number here is 16,426. Then we have 18, am I right? Yep, 18,235. Then we have 19,077. We have 21,887. So it's actually an anti-clockwise order, right? There's our five different categories. What's the middle? That's the middle there, so your answer is that. Okay, my handwriting today is shocking, but I hope that you can see it. Okay, so let's go on to the next question, right? So these questions are not too difficult, so we can get through them quite quickly. Let's just make sure that we're getting these easy marks. Determine the number of Ford F-Series vehicles sold in Canada. Okay, so we're looking at Canada. So it says Ford F, and oh, that's a little bit tricky because we don't have anything there. Okay, so they're wanting us to work this out given the information that we have. Now, it's not too difficult because we have the total number. So now if we have the total number of cars and we subtract all of these amounts that we have here, 
whatever's left has to be the Ford F-Series, right? That's how it works. This is all of the cars, everything that's in that pie. So if we take all the slices of the pie out of this big pie, then all we're left with is that last little slice, okay? So not too difficult. We're going to say, let me just make sure I'm writing this nicely, right? We're going to say 4.2.4. We're going to say 3, 5, 7, 2, 4, 3. That's the total. And we're going to subtract all of these smaller amounts, okay? Biggest thing here is, okay, I'm just going to subtract them like this. The memo, you don't have to put these brackets in if you don't want to. I'm just going to subtract all of these here. 757. The, the memo puts these all in brackets. I don't see. It's just more complicated than it needs to be, right? All here for simplicity. Okay. So all we need to do now is make sure that we are putting this into our calculator correctly, right? And as I've said many times, this is often where students um, sort of make silly mistakes or careless mistakes. And um, you see, I've literally just made one, haven't I? No, I haven't. Good. 61934 minus 53757 minus 51684. Okay. And the number of Ford F series from my calculation is 116401. Okay. And that is your answer there. Let me just get back our questions. Right. And that is the answer for that question. Okay. So we've done there. Three marks. Easy. Now we get to the bigger mark questions, right? So look at, we have a four, we have a six, and we have a three. So this is where there's going to be a little bit more calculation work. So let's look here. The interquartile range for the top 10 vehicles sold in South Africa is 7,669. And the value of the quartile one is 11408. Calculate the value of quartile three. Now students see this and they're like, ah, what's going on, right? And I think, you know, that's, that's fair enough, but let's just always go back to basics. Whenever you're in that space where you're like, oh, I'm panicking a little bit, like, let's just go back to basics. Firstly, obviously write 4.2.5. The interquartile range is quartile three minus quartile one, okay? That's what the interquartile range is, that's definition. If you don't know that, learn it, okay? So now my interquartile range, from what's been given here, is seven seven no it's not seven 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 six six nine okay don't be like me okay quartile one is one one four oh eight and they're wanting us to find quartile three now right if in the interquartile range is quartile three minus quartile one then you should be able to see right that quartile three is actually just going to be these two amounts added together right so if you add those two amounts, that's going to give me quartile three. And you could be saying, oh, but Mark, how does that make sense? Right? Well, think about it. Okay. If I have a number and I'm subtracting this number from it and it gives me that number, this number has to be bigger than both of these numbers. Right? So you should be thinking, okay, if I bring this number here over to this side, because I want to get quartile three by itself. Remember from basic algebra, right? You could be saying, oh, I'm doing math slip because I don't want to do algebra. But this is just basic logic. If I bring it over, it has to become plus. So now quartile three, then it's just those two amounts added together, right? So add that together, and that is your answer. So it's 19077, okay? And that is your answer, and we are done, okay? So the biggest thing here is they're wanting you to go back to basics and also show that you can manipulate what's there, okay? Let's go on to the next question. Now, the next question says, the inflation rates in America for 2021 were 7%, okay? And in 2020, it was 1,4%. That was our big COVID year. The price of the Ford F-Series vehicle in 2022 is 32, 32, 33, two, um, dollars, right? So that's how much it is in 2022. Then the question says, it is stated that the price of the Ford F-Series vehicle in 2020 was more than this amount, okay? Verify showing all calculations whether the statement is valid. Now, what's important here is that at the end of your answer, regardless of what calculations you do, you have to say, is it valid or is it not? You can't just do calculations and leave it at that. You have to make a statement saying yes or no. Okay. So what we have to do is we have to go from this 32332 three, two, and we have to strip out the inflation for 2021 and 2020 to get us, right, this amount here, right? So we have to strip it out. Now you could be saying, oh goodness, how do I strip it out? Okay, well, it's similar to VAT. Remember when I say with VAT, when you want to add it, you times by 1,15. And 
And when you want to strip it out, you divide by 1,15 because the VAT rate is 15%. Here, it's obviously not the VAT rate, it's an inflation rate. So we're going to go and strip out the inflation for um, 2021 and 2020. Okay, so it's basically saying if we have these three years, okay, Okay, so you get me from there to there at a 1.4% inflation, and from there to there, I had a 7% inflation. But now I'm saying, oh, actually, please just strip it all out so that we can know how much it actually um, cost in 2020. Okay, so that's what we're doing. And if we're stripping it out, we're going to divide by these. Now, students often just want to divide by the percentage. No, you have to divide similarly to how you do with VAT. So here, you're going to divide by 1.07, right? Here, you're going to divide, divide by 1.014. Now you could be saying, how on earth did you get that, Marks? Well, what I did is I added 100, right, to this. So for, for example, 7%, so I said 100 plus 7, and I got 107. And I said, okay, I want to make it a decimal because that's how I want to work. I divide it by 100, I make it a decimal, and there you are. I did exactly the same with 1.4%, okay? So let's start by writing this out. So we're going to strip it out like this. We're going to say the cost of the car in 2022 and I'm going to divide out the inflation for 2021. 32332 over 1.07. So that is my answer. You can round it off here, okay? But I don't want you to round it off in your calculator yet, because remember, we only round off at the end. Then we're going to say this answer, 30216.82. I'm just going to go like that with the little dots. Divided by 1.014. 014, be careful you type it incorrectly. And the answer there is 29799.63. Why did I make it 63? Right? Well, remember with currency, you always only have two decimal places. Here it says 627. When you want two decimal places, we go to the third decimal place. We see whether it's greater than five, five or greater, and then we round up. If it's less than that, we round down. Here we're rounding up, so it's 63. Let's go and see if we've answered our question. It says it is stated that the price of the Ford F-Series vehicle in 2020 was more than uh, 29,800. Well, our, our calculations, that's not true. It's actually less, right? So we say, therefore, statement, right? Statement is false. So be careful to actually answer the question, right? Students answer, do all the calculations fabulous, but then they don't actually answer the, the final statement, right? So you don't want to lose marks for that. Even if you don't know what's going on, take a guess, right? 4.2.7 says determine as a percentage the probability of purchasing a Ram pickup in America. Okay, so go back to Annexure, right? Here is um, your graph. Again, you also be in color, right? I looked at um, the, the color version on my laptop, and this is what Ram is, okay? So Ram is the 569388. It's asking us for... The probability of purchasing this RAM pickup in America. Okay, so saying what is the probability when we have this pie that if I take a random piece from this pie that it's that piece? Okay, well, the probability is how big that piece is, 569388, over the total number of cars sold in America in this year, which is that amount that we wrote out in words earlier in the question. So, let's also say, see what it asks us to do. It says as a percentage, so we're going to have to convert it to a percentage. So, 4.2.7, so it's going to be 569388, okay, that's the RAM, over 2584176. How do we make it a percentage? We times by 100, right? That's the standard way of making a percentage. We're going to put this into our calculator, and then we'll be done for this question. So, make sure that when you're writing this out, right, um, when you're typing it in, you're always doing it correctly. Um, I have a habit of doing some strange things on my calculator. And the answer is 22. Now, it didn't say to the nearest round percentage, right? It didn't say that we needed to do any rounding off or anything. It just said as a percentage, the probability of purchasing. So we're going to write this here. I'm going to say it's 22,03%, right? They didn't say how many decimal places, but generally speaking, we look at two, right? That's your answer. And you've just got 100% for this question. I hope that was helpful. Let's move on to question five and finish off this paper.